hey everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is lola and on today's video i'm going to be sharing with you seven new parents tip and i'm sure they're going to be useful to you i'm a new parent although my son is eight months now but you know i still consider myself obviously a new parent and there are a couple of things that i have learned and i think sometimes we may overlook but are very very important and i guess this would be a part one because i'm sure there are more tips that will come up along my journey as a parent which is a life lifetime journey <laughs> anyway so let's get into the video shall we so in no particular order number one is to wipe baby's mouth after feeding i mean this goes without saying of course when you feed your baby you wipe their mouth down but for solids and for maybe you know bottle feeding like milk that's obvious to do but when breastfeeding it's it's not something that i think a lot of people do because you just you know put the child to the breast the child finishes breastfeeding and especially when you're going to put them down to sleep afterwards and the reason why i say to wipe baby's mouth is breast milk is sweet and i actually noticed that sometimes when i put down his bottle or you know or my pump that i used to um, express milk i see some ants like sugar ants gather around it and i just think to myself like what if it's this boy's face and you know that i didn't maybe wipe off the breast milk if any spilled and i just put him down and ants gather and these babies can't talk you know god forbid i don't know maybe i'm just paranoid but i think it's important to wipe your baby's mouth after breastfeeding so that you don't you know give them or stand the risk of inviting any sugar ants yeah number two is mommy and daddy disagreements if you've had your kid for a while or you have more than one kid please comment below to let us know do you and your husband still have disagreements about what is good for the child or not and let me give you an example so in fact i have so many examples i could give you things like you know or oh, carry the baby i remember when my my i just had my son oh my god me and my husband no you don't carry the baby's head like that no no put the baby like this no you put the baby to lay down on that side put it like this no so many so many 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 tiny small small disagreements here and there will always come up but you don't want them to bloom into like a full blown full blown argument or like become um you know a fight or build strife the focus should be the child and what is best for the child so to curb this or to you know kind of help with this i think you know something to do is to employ the use of fact checkers and your fact checkers could be you know baby apps it could be parenting books it could be experienced parents or grandparents around it could be your nurses it could be your doctor you know just to help both of you be on the same page because there's so many small small unnecessary arguments that could ensue and may even blow up into something else if you don't scrub it so yeah that's my number two new parents will always have small small disagreement but employ the use of fact checkers number three i'll say take extra 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 care as newborns you know they're so fragile everything about them has to be really really um taken care of specially things like washing their clothes please don't wash your newborn or even maybe until they're worn as much as you can don't wash their clothes with everybody else's clothes whether you do it by hand or you do it with the washing machine let their clothes be washed separately they are as much as they are as much a full human being as you are so don't say mm, it's just a baby joy let me put him with my own clothes no please wash your baby's clothes separately they're they're eating um utensils maybe their their bottles their plates their spoons things like that have a separate sponge or brush for them 
and then make sure that they are sterilized their sleeping area is so important that wherever you lay them to sleep is protected from anything that could hurt them like i said they can't talk they can't they, the only way they can express themselves is by crying and that doesn't say much to you so make sure that their sleeping area is well protected protected from mosquitoes or you know anything that could hurt them or cause infection obviously general hygiene you know washing hands of course with coronavirus now nobody needs to tell anybody to wash their hands or use sanitizers it used to be a thing like where maybe an auntie or you know an elder person elderly person or whatever would pick an offense if you say oh please wow <laughs> if you say oh please use a hand sanitizer before you carry the baby or please wash your hand like if they're just coming from outside or something like I just wonder at people that behave like that of course before corona like is that even something to debate like people literally pick offense that they like if you know me you know that things that i don't even care pick offense from now to tomorrow let's fight and scatter it about my child <laughs> i will do everything that i need to protect my child if you want to fight with me or with the world you are on your own so of course with coronavirus and everything going on i'm sure everybody will take extra care that's if they even come to your house at all but yeah goes without saying hygiene on a hundred don't put camphor in you know your child's wardrobes yes they should have their own clothes space as much as possible because as adults we have a lot of bacteria that grows on our skin and you just don't want to risk anything so let them have their own clothes space Again, I said, please don't use camphor. I actually learned this from my antenatal um, group. The doctor or the nurse there said to not to use camphor because it's chemical and it could cause rashes, it could cause skin irritation and things like that. So yeah, please don't use camphor in your child's wardrobe. Car seats. This is something that Nigerians need to, you know, get onto outside nigeria in most advanced countries like it's not even a thing because if you don't use a car seat you could actually get arrested but in nigeria it's just recently that you know people are starting to get into using car seats and things like that it's really important not just for the safety of your child which is the most obvious reason but for the you know comfortability if that's the word of the child i actually realized because there had been a time when I think I forgot my son's car seat in maybe my husband's car and I was in my car, you know, and I had to hold him for a long distance. The child themselves, they're not comfortable, especially when they're not able to sit up by themselves yet. And you hold, you know, they're not comfortable. And I just realized that every time he's in his car seat, he is so comfortable, he's so relaxed, he can sleep up. And even myself, I'm relaxed because I know that he is safe. And God forbid, if anything happens, because they're so fragile, you know, you can survive some heat or whatever, but for them, you know, that may be the end, God forbid, for that child. So, Nigerians, please, I think we need to catch up on um, the culture of using car seats. And another reason that I think, or I know that Nigerians don't use car seats a lot is because the car seat actually does take up space. And let's say you're a family of four, you know, and one child or two children are using car seats, that's it, the car is already full. But as much as possible, as much as you can, please use a car seat. And even if you're, if you're not using a car seat, sit in the back, don't sit in the front with the child. Ordinary holding brake, that child can, you know, fly forward and hit their head and, or just, it's so unnecessary. But let's, we can do better. We can actually do better with car seats. Yeah, now we know better, so we do better. Number five is, your baby's clothes or even your your little child or your your even for yourself so something happened um in like the first month of my son's birth and this wasn't even when we're not even in nigeria so we washed his clothes and then we dried them outside and after i brought the clothes in yes i always iron his clothes and everything but even after ironing it so that the next day or so maybe some days later or something you know i was um i took i 
bathed him and you know changed him and everything so no so i bathed him and my auntie changed him and so, you know all those baby overalls that always have that hand um thing that goes over like the arm like the, the hand in that place do you know that there was an ant and not just a small ant you know like skirt and blouse that was the ant that was hiding there close that i undo close that i would so please so since that day <laughs> Even if I iron the clothes, whatever, I always, every time I change him, you know, to new clothes, I always go through all the nooks and crannies of the clothes just to see and to make sure that there's nothing lurking in there that's going to hurt the boy. Like I said, they can't talk. They can't say anything. The only way they can express themselves is by crying. And God forbid you get a sting already and, you know, the crying is, I mean, it's just going to be crazy. So... Please go through your child's clothes, even your own clothes too. Yeah, especially if you live in like a bushy area or where insects are and things like that. Go through their clothes, iron the clothes. Even after you, you iron them, when you're changing them, go through their clothes. Since that day, nobody told me. Number six, mommy, you need help. Yes. <laughs> after you have your baby most moms go through baby blues and that's a period when you're so emotional you know your hormones are going crazy and like for me i was so emotional like i used to cry a lot and i just always felt like nobody can take care of this boy like me i'm the one that's going to protect him and yes that's true you know i think for the most part but after a while <laughs> You would realize that you need help because if you if you want to do everything yourself then it's going to be crazy because you also need to take care of yourself because if you're not in a good mental space and even physical place then you won't be able to give your child the best so the thing is just to get people that you trust of course your spouse or you know grandparents or if you have a nanny help and all those kind of things people that you trust people that you've put through you know with the way you do things maybe the way you change the diaper the way you um wipe your baby down the way you um you know just everything to the little detail once you've passed on that instruction to that person that you trust you know it's good to take some time even if it's an hour and just you know let someone else help out so yeah even if you are feeling like only me can take care of this child nobody can take care of this child i have to protect this child you also realize that you need help and then the last but not the least is regarding domestic help i think i'm going to need to do a full video on this separate before you get help please make sure they do a full health check most hospitals that i know have you know like a checklist of things that they test for even now with this whole coronavirus i don't know maybe that'll be one of the things <laughs> but anyways yeah there are things that they check for and i've actually heard a lot of stories of people that have employed help so maybe the person came in today and then they went to do the test by the next day when the test came in they realized that the person either had hiv or like in my case the girl had hepatitis b very very contagious so yeah please make sure you do your health checks very important then the other thing is to as much as possible if you can i recommend it please if you can have cameras in your house you cannot be too careful with your child like god gave you this child to be their caretaker basically you didn't create this child god created this child and gave you this child to take care of so you need to do everything in your power to make sure that this child is protected from everything not just hurt or harm anything that could impact the child in a negative way and when it comes to helps or nannies or all you know, anybody that is not maybe part of your family that knows how things run or that you know well you need to really really be careful and keep an eye on them and the things they do like i said i think i'm going to need to do a whole video about this because i don't think it's everybody that really pays 
much like they're just like oh yeah i have a help oh yeah she will clean she will take care of the child she will take care of the child you know but you need to be careful so things like cameras you know put checks and balances in place where you can even when you are not around you can your child is protected and you, you you know you can kind of monitor what is going on i don't want this video to be too long so i'm just going to stop there and those are my seven tips seven new parents tips <laughs> seven new parents tips that word i don't know please if you know what the right thing is write it down below in the comments seven new parents tips seven new parents tip seven tips for new parents i guess we should just say that thank you guys so much for watching if this is your first time of encountering my channel please subscribe like this video if you liked it and leave a comment below if you have more tips parents out there if you have more tips please leave them below i'll go there and check them out other parents that are watching also go there and check them out even intending parents go there and check them out and build your knowledge um diary about parenting it's very important you need to you know keep learning you can never know it all anyways thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one bye